Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Jail Chanel's For This World with our co-host, The Family. Okay, we let them chime in, and I chime in, and we make one big happy family, okay, with opinions on the opinions over here. This is an allegedly uh, show over here, okay? Everything is allegedly. We just like to put our two cents in and make it go a little longer. Just, you know, not pillow talk, but just a little soft talky talk here and there and everywhere, okay? But uh, I was just scrolling down. Y'all like my earrings? They're so cute, ain't they? They're Papa, Papa Rossi. And hell, I used to sell the shit. But anyway, uh, they just never would give me my pieces that I needed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it just is what it is. But we're going to be talking about Nene Lee's and her lawsuit that she called herself dropping. And I was like, okay, well, since you're dropping the lawsuit, Nene, what did they give you? Okay, because if you go over to your social media page, blacklisted is gone everything is just cheery over there and to tell you the truth i hope you got what you wanted to get because you probably don't get no more all right because um people will tend to forgive you but yet they won't forget so i don't know what you got but i'm sure you had to get something and i don't even know why you would come back one day saying you're going to sue them again. I'm like, no, Nene, they had some shit on you, and you had some shit on them. And somehow, in between times, I think y'all just came to the meetings of the mind that said, we got each other, okay? We see each other. When she was standing the candy, we see each other, all right? So I'm thinking that's where it came. You had some mess on them. They had some serious mess on you, and y'all just called a truce. And hopefully you won't ever go back to that situation. Um, a lot of people are speculating. Not a lot, but, you know, enough to uh, make you want to pause for the cause. To say, hmm, could that happen? Maybe it would happen. Should it happen? Those kinds of questions. And we're just saying, um, some people were in the comments saying uh, they probably think Bravo would, let me, Bravo would like to have Nene back. <laughs> I'm going to laugh on that one. I'm like, no, nah, baby, they don't want Miss Hot Fire, Firecracker up there trying to tell their trade secrets and how they get down behind closed doors. Because right now, it's all speculation, all in the windows. You don't know if the, she was telling the real truth. Did she really have them over a barrel uh, where she had closed the lid on them and she knew it was going to be a something, something? See, we ain't going to know about it because Nene ain't going to tell about it because she's probably under oath or a gag order saying you won't get this opportunity or you won't get this type of money if you say anything derogatory about us you you defame our character still out there you talk salty about us you know trying to break it down in her own language or knowing what was what what jig is up but i'm like <laughs> no nene she would probably do something stupid and they'll end up taking everything they had promised they was going to give to her but honestly, I might be wrong. I'm not really sure. Like I said, it's just my opinion. I don't think they're going to give Nene a show that uh, put them out there like that. And even if they did, what profit would they get off of it? Because people are going to still be saying, Nene ain't shit. Nene is, you know, uh, out there being rude and nasty and all that. And, you know, just almost like she did on College Hill. We know that was like a little something to put back in her bank account, but it didn't probably uh, drop down a big ton in her savings or checking account she got that she was pleased with. But at least it was more, it was money coming in. And I don't know if they get um, 
in the syndication on College Hill. I don't know if they do that. And then she would get resi residuals off of that. But this going too far. This all up in the air. We don't know. Okay. But I was like, okay. Nene uh, solved or resolved whatever she had with Bravo. Nene, did you make it better for another black woman or women in general from different diversities, from different cultures? Did you get down to the real nitty gritty of the real racism, the real discrimination, and the hostile work environment? Did we get any of that resolved? Because we already know you got your money, you gonna do what you wanna do, or was it all for you? Because you had us believing, well, you didn't have me believing, God, I could see through anything pretty much. You had the, uh, some of the masses of people, your followers, your fanatics, whoever you, however you like to uh, look at, people that worship you or they would go to bats for you. Did you make it a fair playing field? Did you break the glass ceiling? Did you do anything for women in general when it came to racism, discrimination, pay, um, the hostile work environment? Did anything get improved? Or was it just the I, I, me, me show? Let me know, honey, because that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. But what we're going to get into, I want y'all to hear a little... Um, um, what you call it? An interview uh, Nene did with E! Online. And I'm thinking it was around the time that her and Cynthia had fell out. Prior to Cynthia getting married, I'm thinking. And I want to know, do Nene feel this still the same way about Cynthia? Because it's kind of like a telltale sign. And I'm looking at Nene to almost agree with her. Uh, was Cynthia really a friend or was she really a foe? You know what I'm saying? Was she playing on the right team uh, to be the winning, you know, piece of resistance, uh, the coming back for the season 14 and 15 and all that? And I did find something interesting that Candy did not say when she did her speak on it. She was talking about the people, or they, well, Don Juan and um, DJ A1 was asking her uh, who would she like to see come back on the show. Did you know? Kenya did not say, uh, Cynthia, uh, nor, well, well, we kind of know. I didn't think they got their stuff together from the Ultimate Girls trip. So that's to be uh, pretty much expected that Kenya would not put Cynthia in her name, in her mouth. But I was floored when she was, uh, Candy asked who would, who would she like to come back uh, on the show. And she said, Nene. Then I think she said, Lisa Wu. And Portia, I think those were her three choices. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. I thought it was, we had a three musketeers. I thought we had a united pact uh, that you and Kenya and Cynthia made with one another. Now, you're saying that you didn't want Cynthia to come back? She didn't come out your mouth, the tip of your tongue? Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. I would like her to come back. So I'm like, hmm, that was very interesting. So it does give one the cause to pause to see if Nene was speaking truth about Cynthia. Okay, because she always said we didn't know about Cynthia. Only time will tell. And um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, let, let, let's go on and say it then. Let's hear, let's speak on it. Like Candy said, speak on it. Or uh, how uh, Isaac Brothers used to say, Ron Isaac says, speak your mind. <laughs> speak your mind. All right. And we're going to speak our mind on this situation. But y'all listen to this interview she did with E! Online. And then we'll get into what E! Online had reported uh, by Allison Christ and Paige Strout. Uh, they wrote up an article on Nene's dropping her lawsuit. So let's listen to this. I bet a commercial going to come on. Attention foodies. Yep. What's this fusion of prime rib steak? Melted provolone and other magical melty stuff. Arby's is now officially a fusion restaurant. Chef Smooch, Arby's, we have the meat. I have definitely been through a much tougher reunion. Um, this one different. What was different about it? Mm, that I had to wear a black dress. 
maybe uh, it's always negative it's always them coming at the one so it's okay it seemed like uh you had maybe a little bit of a strategy going in you're like i'm gonna be calm i'm gonna be cool collected i don't think so i never do you know one thing i can say very openly is that i do not like the reunion um, that is not a secret to any of my cast members. It's not a secret to my producers. It's not a secret to Andy Cohen. They all know how I feel about it. I was actually the person who actually basically created the reunion. I went to Andy Cohen one day and said, let's have a reunion. And I hate I ever said that because we've been having a reunion ever since. And, you know, it's just not something that I want to, I, I don't like it. So when I walk out, I know that, you know, the gun is pointed at me. So it's not like anything that I'm like excited to do. There was the scene where Andy pulled Andy aside and was saying, um, just so you know, like, Sophia had no idea that Kenny was coming, blah, blah, blah. What was your reaction when you saw that? Listen, you know, the, the best way I can explain is over the years, they've always played me as the villain. I've always been the villain. Somebody's got to be the villain, right? They've always played Cynthia as this nice person. So it's easy for them to point their fingers at me. Your eyes ain't fooling you. Cynthia did exactly what she did. And what's crazy is she cut me. And she's really out here acting like she's the one that's bleeding. It's crazy to me. And it's easy for everybody to be like, okay, it's Nene, 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 Nene did it. Trust everything I'm telling you. She is lying through her teeth. That girl is lying to you. I'm telling you, she is lying with no issue at all. She's lying. She's out here doing damage control. She's running around here saying Nene is a toxic friend, an unhealthy friend to be in a relationship with. A toxic friend, I'm blown away. When I saw that, I saw it hours before we walked on that set. When we do a reunion, they give you those tapes that night, and you watch all three, the final three episodes. When I walked out there, when I saw that, I cried like a baby. Because I felt like, you know, this is my sister. My husband had cancer. I don't want to lose a friend right now. You know, I love her like a sister. I'm hurt and shocked. That she's out here actually saying she was a toxic friend. That's very hurtful. I, I've never been a toxic friend to her. I'm not going to do to her, though, what she's doing to me. Eventually, this is what I say. Eventually, everything will come to light. Keep pointing the gun at me. Just remember, she said I was a toxic friend and I'm an unhealthy person to be in a relationship with. Don't you forget I told you that. For a very long time, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I love having girlfriends. And I feel like, you know, when you're working on a show like this, you get close because you're just working with people. So you, you guys even see each other outside of work, and you get, get, get kind of cool, right? So it took me years to realize that, no, 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 no. You can't be cool with these people. You, these are your coworkers, and I'm clear about that. To walk into that reunion and have certain girls to really just go against me for no real reason, that's very hurtful. So they are my coworkers, and I, I don't want to be friends with them. Let's be clear, I do not want to be friends with anybody that is willing to put their friendship on the line to secure a bag. I would never do that. Most of these girls are boring, okay? Let's be clear, okay? So they need to try and turn it up at the reunion because all the executives have flown in. So they need to turn it up and let them know, I'm here, I'm here, I need my peach for next season. I don't do that. I come in, however I feel is how I feel. What you see is what you get. But I can guarantee you this. I ain't faking the funk with you, not now, today. I'm giving you all realness. And if I did something wrong, I would tell you. She is a liar. She's a liar, and they conspire, and they're in an alliance. Okay, so y'all heard. I don't know what season that was when they all wore black. Or maybe Nene was just wearing black. I don't know. It was. I think it was black when Portia was on the scene as well. Um, but anyway, um, what do y'all think about Nene saying that those are her co-workers when she was on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and she was giving it all she got because she said she don't fake the phone. And I'm like, Nene, 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 <laughs> you wasn't being your true self either. You know what I'm saying? In some of those episodes, I'm like, girl, but let's get on into the article um, like I said, Miss Christ, or Christ, uh, and Miss Strote wrote this article up. They titled it Real Housewives of Atlanta, Nene Leakes Drops Lawsuit Against Bravo and Andy Cohen. Okay, 
we, we, we saw that coming off, we, we, the ones who really know about contracts or know a little about contracts, you know, and you stuck down to the truth that that wasn't going no court. Mm-mm. Too much hash has been slashed, you know what I'm saying? Too many lies have been told, and people got receipts and stuff. So, and this, like I said, Nene probably had hers, and they had theirs on Nene. It wasn't going to be a fair fight either way, so it was better that they called it a truce than anything else. Um, it says, Nene Leaks dismissed the suit that alleged Bravo and the teens behind Real Housewives of Atlanta did not stop or, vi- or prevent a racist work environment from thriving on set. Get the latest update. Okay, so you see how they put that. Uh, come on, phone on buffer. They said, let me read it to you again. It said, Nene Leaks dismissed the suit that alleged Bravo and the teens behind Real Housewives of Atlanta did not stop or prevent a racist work environment from thriving on set. Get the latest update. So, what did you change, Nene? Is it still the same toxic work environment? Are they still doing racism? Are they still doing discrimination? Are they um, not paying women the same amount of money that they would pay you know, men? Well, I mean, what was going on? Um, you wanted us to know about the lawsuit. You wanted us to know that you had the goods on them and you had your receipts and you just, whoo, you just sitting on a gold mine and you just want to just release all your tapes, all your evidence to the public and we make a public opinion on how you should be represented or what you should get from this lawsuit. But you didn't give us any of that, Nene. You didn't give us that. That's why I say you toy. You toy with your followers, your fanatics, your fans, and you don't give them what they need. And that's info. Okay? That's all I'm saying, Nene. You don't play it fair. You let us know about this. Why you didn't let us know about that? You know? Uh, But anyway, we'll get on into the story. It says, the former Real Housewives of Atlanta star has dropped her discrimination lawsuit against Bravo. Real Housewives of, of Atlanta executive producer Andy Cohen and the production companies behind the reality franchise, according to court documents obtained by E! News. Leaks hereby dismiss this action and all claims asserted by leaks without prejudice, thereby concluding this case before the for, wait a minute, concluding this case before this court at this time, the doc reads, all parties consent and stipulate to the foregoing dismissal. Okay, it says, no, no party will seek recovery of costs or attorney fees in any submission to this court. Initially filed in April, the lawsuit, which also uh, named NBC Universal, True Entertainment, and Truly Original as defendants alleged that the network had fostered a corporate and workplace culture that has permitted and tolerated, if not encouraged, racially offensive and insensitive conduct, statements, and actions by their employees. As part of the suit, Leaks specifically took issue with the former Real Housewives of Atlanta co-star Kim Zosiak Berman, alleged racist insensitivity or insensitive behavior, though she was not listed as a defendant. The original lawsuit that Zosiac Berryman was allowed and permitted to engage in racially offensive conduct and or make racially offensive statements without any facing, without facing any uh, consequences from the network. During an interview with Owns, the nightcap in June of 2022, Kim briefly addressed the lawsuit. She knows what she's saying is not true in regards to me, she said. That's ridiculous, and she knows it, so I'll deal with her when she's done with them. Prior to the lawsuit, Leaks called out Bravo and Cohen in September 22, tweeting, My, my white counterparts were elevated and given four seasons, uh, episodes every season. Each season, I was given less and less. Don't ask me at Andy Cohen and Bravo and ask them why. Leak started as one of the Real Housewives of Atlanta original Housewives upon its premiere in 2008. 
and stayed on full time season seven after stepping down to a guest role for season eight and skipping out on season nine she returned full-time for season 10 before making her official bravo exit after the 12th season in 2020 okay so i'm like nene you still have some unresolved issues okay you did you wanted us well not me but you wanted your fans or fanatics to take up for you because they fight they felt you was um, what do you call it? You were defending women, black women, and the equality that everybody should be treated fairly, regardless of their culture differences, their race differences, their age differences. You wanted everything just to be fair, okay? And transparent. But actually, you went in by yourself and you came out by yourself. And you're not letting us know anything of the situation. I mean, you can, I don't think, you, they gotta have, got to have a gag order on you of not saying anything that will be de defaming their brand, okay? They're going to give you X, Y, Z worth of money. You're going to go away in the sunset. But let it be known, if you try, because we're going to be watching you. If you try to say something slick, you try to say something under the tone, you even make reference of anything that we hashed out then we're going to renege and we will see you in court so i think it's more so the um agencies or the entities of like true entertainment true original um uh, but bravo um truly original i think i said that but they're going to be looking at you to make sure you're holding up your end of the bargain by not not crucifying them now Everything's supposed to be like smooth sailing, and we forget we're supposed to forget about everything. Now, if Nene was true to herself, she would have fought them, she would have fought them to the nail and say, No, we're gonna go to court if that was even an option. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because she wasn't doing it for just herself and her livelihood, she's trying to make it better for you know women in general of all races, of all creeds, of all colors. You see what I'm saying? But that that. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the deal, the, the winning ticket. And that was the same, huh? <laughs> he, he took, oh, well, y'all got to lock y'all bathroom, though. Oh, and then my grandson then took their roll of bathroom tissue and then just brought it out, out into the office. <laughs> Ooh, and I didn't know he was doing it because I'm up here taping the show. And he being quiet. He's being on his little sofa. Oh, my goodness. But anyway. Ooh, that's your son. <laughs> but uh, anyway, damn, I tell you, you just broke my concentration. I'll, you always do that when you come up here. But uh, yeah, I think Nene went in self-serving and she came out self-serving. And to honest, to to be honestly truthful, I think that would be that's human nature. We are we are gonna go solidify and cement our uh our wealth. Or what we felt was done to us. We're going to try to make it do what it do. And it is going to be about me, myself, and I. So, I, you know, but see, Nene was on the premises. Uh, she just didn't like that they were discriminating against, you know, her. And it probably was, you know, her color and all this stuff. And, and it was just unfair. You know, and I'm like, okay, we still have black women up there. And they're seemingly like, they like their job. They... Don't go in after one season has passed and tell them, I don't want to be a part of the show anymore because I think y'all are ratchet. I think y'all are, dis you know, uh, y'all are disgraceful. Y'all discriminate. You know, just everything, especially when you have done a good job for that season. And that what you're saying would just be coming out the blue because they know they rewarded you accordingly. And uh, but none of them have done that. So it's almost like he say, she say type of deal because if it really was like that even though candy's still there kenya's still there um who else we got and the newcomers they're still there so would it be something like okay maybe they just didn't like you nene because you'd have been so much doing so much um damage control to show them up and for us to forget about what you did, what we saw on TV, hell, what we see in Atlanta when we are in the uh, same vicinity that you are. 
you are stuck up. You are like you're the only one that's there in, in society. Uh, and I do believe it because they, they really caught you on camera. And I'm still talking about that incident of you and two women fight, well, fussing, arguing real uh, bad in the airport. And then this white gentleman saw you in a um, hair, not a hair salon, but a um, beauty, what do you call that thing when you go into um, a store and it just sells all hair accessories along with any other type of accessories like fake pocketbooks and all that. I, I don't know what you call it, a wig store, I guess, to, to be fair. Because that's what most people are going in there to buy weave or wigs or other accessories for the hair, the grooming part of uh, doing your hair. And possibly have a, a office space where they can do, uh, I guess, weaves or sew in on the, on the spot. But yeah, a couple of from out of town, white older little happy couple just visiting Atlanta, making it do what it do. And they finally ran into a celebrity. And then they were sitting up there wanting to get your uh, autograph for some of you sitting up there like, why are y'all here? I'm not talking to you all. I'm not giving you any of my energy. Why are y'all still bothering me? And we, when we saw it, and they had it on news, and I think it was in um, the AJC, our, um, um, our newspaper rag that's still here in Atlanta. Or, um, <laughs> well, he put it on social media, so it was probably hitting Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at the same damn time. Uh, they was showing themselves, and they showed Nene, and it was Nene. It was nobody portraying that, you know, her look alike or whatever. Uh, it was her. And she was, like, not saying anything to those people. So it was really a telltale sign. So we don't, I don't know, Nene. I don't know. Because you want, I guess you want to be, um, you're fake to your real celebrity, uh, well, your followers and your fanatics. But you're you're all good and everything's gravy when you're rubbing heads with other local celebrities or celebrities that have come out of town. So I don't know y'all. What y'all think? You can get down in them comments and say whatever you want to say. You know I'll swoop down there sooner or later and put y'all little hearts or chat marks or I might even comment if I thought you said something that, you know, really made me think. You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, I didn't take it to be that way. Thank you. For, you know, uh, letting me see a new opinion or a new uh, perception on the take of this uh, topic we're uh, discussing tonight or that particular night I was doing the video. So, <sighs> I don't know. It seems like the monster that Bravo created is going to continue. It's going to continue. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if she starts to act all nice and start saying things about, you know, Bravo and True Entertainment. We know uh, she sold herself out, meaning she sold herself to uh, not say anything against them, derogatory, or really anything about them at all. And she was still getting paid. So, if that's the way we play the game, Nene, I guess that's the way we play the game. Or, girl, did they tell you they was going to uh, hook you up with some jobs, honey? Did, was that a part of it? Mm, okay. Like I said, we'll never know. And I know it'll never be in your tell-all book. It just is what it is, right? You got paid, you got dealt with, and you moving on. But are you not going to be fair to your fanatics, your fans, and tell them what really went down? <laughs> going to write that tell-all book. I know it wouldn't be no section in there. It would just be in the windows, uh, speculations. Uh, how we say over in YouTube world, allegedly. All right. But that's all I got for this video, guys. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.